Hello! Hello! <laughs> and welcome back to another Real World Archaeology. Uh, in this series, we take films, usually with an archaeological or historical theme, and analyse them in a slightly nitpicky way mm. to see whether or not they're historically accurate. Um, this, of course, is mainly for fun. So, uh, I think usually we pick films which we like. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, this one was an interesting one. I don't think you could be described as really liking the film. In the same way that I like going into icy water. <laughs> <laughs> it's invigorating. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at uh, Outlander, mm -hmm. a film from 2008, which is set in Norway in the year 709 AD. Uh, we'll come to that in just a moment. Yeah. Um, it is a, a film which is, a, is very much a B-movie sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And it uh, rather ambitiously was designed to be uh, a, a sort of a, a real world explanation as to how the story of Beowulf came around. So these events occurred, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, these events occurred, and then eventually the poem, the epic poem of Beowulf, was born out of yeah. them. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so let's crack on. Now we've we've got we've got copious notes here, and this will be at least a two-parter. So. <laughs> So strap in and uh, spoiler heavy, by the way, as well. Mm -hmm. Off we go. Um, okay, so uh, first, well, for the first, I suppose, bad thing about the film is that it's set in 709 AD. Yeah. Um, in Norway. Yeah, um, Beowulf isn't in Norway. And 709 AD isn't technically proper Viking Age. Mm, it's too the early. area. Yep. Just before. <laughs> so too early. He should, he should technically be from southern Sweden, or was it the Geats? Yeah, Denmark, yeah. Sweden. It's it's shady. What's Denmark and what's Sweden? Okay. And those southern parts. But nonetheless, Norway, <laughs> seven hundred nine AD. It Wrong. So we're off to a bad start, <laughs> unfortunately. Now, um, now this film actually uh, it does start then, but it actually starts in space, and mm -hmm. there's a spaceship crashing into to Earth. And uh, this is actually one of the weird things where, as responsible scientists and aspirational geeks, mm -hmm. we can't actually take a point off of this. No, because no. We don't know. We don't, maybe something did crash to Earth yeah. in 709 AD. And it's really well done. Exactly, and at this point someone's typing ANCIENT ALIENS <laughs> on the keyboard. <laughs> and but, if um, you have seen my future uh, videos, you know what I think about ANCIENT ALIENS. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But nonetheless, they can't, that, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a, a nil sum, so yeah. that's neither positive nor, nor negative. But, um, he crashes and he's the only survivor, buries mm -hmm. his captain and then uh, has this little beacon thing that sort of says um, where he is. Yeah, he, he says, Mayday, you, Mayday. Yeah, Mayday, Mayday and then sort of, well, not, although obviously not because that's, that's French. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but in some alien language it's saying, you know, we are here and it says uh, you are currently in, um, in Norway yeah. and it's the Iron Age. Actually, that's 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 not too bad. Actually, they could no. be worse than that. But we won't put that as a positive. Um, and um, and the, actually, then this is the positive. The dialect is Old Norse. Mm -hmm. They did well on that. Now, obviously, in the film, they're speaking English. Yeah. But at least they, at least they acknowledge that the dialect is Old Norse. So this sort of viewfinder pops up and yeah. sort of sucks. Well, not sucks. Blows language into his eyes. Um, like one of those. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be funky? Um, you can either do a three-year degree studying <laughs> old languages, or you can just have this ten-second hit. It does hurt, though. It seems to hurt a lot. Yeah, um, and uh, so that, that, that's 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 a positive. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's positive. Now, um, so he has this space age gun, um, and he's going through the forest. And he's like, where? What's going on? Where? Who am I? And he comes across um, a whale. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the remains of a whale. Now. This is technically a positive, technically. But not really. But not really, but it is technically, so I'm going to give it a, a tick because... <laughs> He's giving it a tick. <laughs> because this is actually what people did do. They did harvest whales. Now, yeah, they, uh, but they is, didn't pull them all the way up to the village. No, they didn't pull them all the way up to the village. It would be on the beach. Do you want to give that a negative as well? Yeah, I do. Okay, there you go. negative <laughs> as well. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't harvest them right in the village. You'd, you'd harvest them on the beach. So the, the, we have records in, I think, some of the sagas of people yeah. sort of guiding... Um, uh, families of whales into fjords and, mm -hmm. and harvesting them. So that, 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 that's 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 good. That's good. Um, now there's, there's there's a personal negative here, uh, and this is this is based on uh, my 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 time working at Jorvik. Yeah, the village that he's come across has been f burned down to fire and ashes, mm -hmm. and um, and he comes across this this bent ass sword on the floor, 
and basically it's the worst possible <laughs> worst possible cheapest replica sword now i suppose if you're going to bend a sword you might as well bend a crap one but it, i was just going that i that's like that's like 50p so it took me right out of the movie so that's a negative for me. personal negative personal negative um you're allowed personal negative as well is that yeah, what you have yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well now swords are crappy swords and now here's one here's one that we both um, did, really didn't like he's then ambushed in the forest near the mm -hmm. village by a man riding a horse. Now, do you want do you want to do you want to explain this? Okay, the horse is way way too big. It's I would categorize it as an English full blood. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, which quite. is a uh, horse bred in the 18th century, I think. Mm -hmm. With some some Frisian links, I think, but yeah. at the same time, too big. Um, Far too big. Um, and they, they didn't really tend to gallop on horses at this point. Maybe no. use them as pack animals. Yeah. Potentially, a really high status person might ride one. Yeah. But it's uh, actually their ponies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the the Swedish and the Icelandic horses that are still around are about 130, 140 centimeters high. Yeah. So what? Yeah. One to the neck. Yeah. One and a half maximum. So yeah. Me meters. Yeah. So tiny horses. Um, giant, men. <laughs> giant men with armor. So um, no, that's a negative. Yeah. Um, so he's ambushed by this guy, knocks unconscious. His his gun is crucially it's lost into a mm -hmm. river, which is fair enough. Again, yeah. that's a, that's a null one. We can't say there hasn't been a gun from space lost in a river at some no, point, you know. No. Um, and they're taken to a ring fort of sorts, a little bit like um, Trailborg, is yeah. that it? Yeah. Um, and now, that's fairly okay. Yeah, it's actually quite good. The architecture is good. The um, the the sort of the curved spines on the roofs. Mm -hmm. The the layout is quite accurate. Stone houses, though. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are the stone houses, and um, we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. But but for the most part, it's good. Um, the, the only negative about it, a, a, a slight tarnish on the tick, is that it's the earth. Ba that there's not an earth bank around. It's mm -hmm. a wooden wall, True. which in the real places that there are earthen banks. But yeah, yeah. Now. Um, at this point, we're introduced to Lady Freya. Oh. Um, now, I wanted to give it a negative again with such a boring, predictable name for yeah. the lady, but not, yeah, never, never. it's 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 better than some of the other names. <laughs> um, so, so we're gonna we're gonna look at, at this in a, at the names in a moment. But Lady Freya is fighting with her father, King Hrothgar. Yeah. Now, Hrothgar is a character who does turn up in Beowulf, and we'll come to him in just a moment. And they're fighting over an arranged marriage. Yeah. Um, now, we haven't actually given this a positive or a, ne or a negative, but a little sort of social thing here is that that's unlikely, isn't it? Uh, no. I mean, no, no, I mean, to, to, to fight in that way. Yeah, 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 I mean, fighting with sword and shields over a ranked marriage is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, and she, she and, and she, uh, her clothes are a bit ridiculous as well, but mm. we'll come to that in a moment as well. <laughs> but anyway, first of all, we're going to look, look, look at names. So, um, Hrothgar is a legendary Danish, Danish king from the early... 6th century yeah. AD. But... But it's not a Viking king. No, anyway. it's not a Viking king. No, no, no. no. Um, one good thing, though, is that she is fighting, fighting well. Yeah. That's a good thing, that's a tick. Um, and, oh, are we going gonna, gonna to give um, Hrothgar a, a cross? Can you get both? I mean, they're in the right time period, but wrong okay. area. Okay, tick and cross, tick and cross, that's fine. Um, that sounds like tickle and... Tickle, <laughs> slap and tickle. Tickle and cross. <laughs> like a really angry tickler. Um, okay, uh, so fighting and fighting well, which is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Shield maidens and all that. Uh, so that's a, that's a tick. Um, and then in comes Wolfric. Now, I don't like this one. I really don't like this because Wolfric is actually a Saxon name. It's not a Viking name. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly not a 6th century uh, Norse name. Mm -hmm. So Wolfric... Uh, no, uh, but he comes in and insists that, that he, no future queen of his need to fight like a man. Now, Wolfric is actually the guy who's just, well, just brought in our hero, uh, unconscious. But really? Sure, yeah, I mean, I, I, I find that to be really attractive. I'm pretty sure a Viking king would. I would. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, precisely. So, yeah, I, I, but also I think from what we know culturally, there's no expectation that a queen need be a... Some sort of damsel. Really little thing, damsel in distress. No. That's that's no. not the Viking or Norse way. No, and especially especially if, if it's likely that, that that her husband or the men might go off on, on yeah. a raid, she'll be expected to be in charge. Yeah, and she needs therefore to be to be you know militarily competent. competent exactly. Um, 
Okay, wardrobes and equipment. Wardrobes and equipment. Now, this, these, these are some uh, some ticks and crosses here. Um, <laughs> first of all, uh, there's a curious combination of fantasy armour, uh, budget uh, and uh, very much budgeted um, mm -hmm. you know, stuff. So they're one step away f in some cases from like Conan. Uh, yeah, Conan the Barbarian, basically. So that's a big negative. There's, 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 I mean, what, what Freya's wearing, she's got her midriff exposed. Her one, shield arm. Her shield arm is exposed, and that actually ends up with her getting a cut on the arm. Um, oh, do you want to mention the tattoos? Oh, uh, yeah, the tattoo looks like they're made with marker. Yeah, yeah. And they have... I, I wouldn't say it's Norse motifs. No, it no. looks like a Sort mix. of quasi-Celtic. Yeah, quasi-Celtic. Yeah. Some could even be like Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah. Like. Mm -hmm. There's one that looks a little bit like something from New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so the tattoos are all over the place. Um, uh, and what are those? Let's see what we have here. Uh, oh, double headed axe turns up as well. We have no such thing as a double headed axe. No. 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 Stop it. <laughs> it's bad. Stop it. Um, Roman but, sandals. Roman sandals. Um, oh, that's a negative. Yeah. yeah no Roman. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. She uh, is, uh, I suppose, later on in the film, wearing shoes that are essentially Roman sandals, and um, no. in a very, very, very wet, slippy environment. Yeah, it's not good. No, not good. Not good. Even the Romans wore shoes when they came to Britain. Yeah, yeah. And they would wear shoes they if they came shoes. to Norway. Yeah, definitely. You need shoes. <laughs> um, so we've got some of that off our chest. Although one of the positives I, I like is the helmets. The helmets are good. The helmets no are horns. quite good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll come to an element of the helmets in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no horns. That's good. Okay. So lots of ticks and, and, and crosses there. Now, um, it was interesting here is that Wolfric mentions that another village has been attacked. This is the village that he found our hero in, and um, uh, the king, John, played by John Hurt Rothgar, says, uh, "Are they slavers?" Um, uh, you know, who, who attacked them? Was it, was it a Rus tribe, now, or Frankish. Rus tribe, or Frankish raiders? And I'm like, what? Mm. That that's the other way around. Yeah, yeah. So you wouldn't get Frankish raiders in no. Norway. No, no, no. Frank, frankly, <laughs> that's ridiculous. So, uh, so Frankish raiders never <laughs> negative. Mentioning the Rus. It's positive, a positive. That's a good. Uh, they're sort of people who sort of looks further to the east. Yeah, if they were in Sweden, I would give that a big plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Um, oh, uh, so our hero is hanging around in public, and his boots are taken away from him. Um, this is not terrible, but better. Uh, and under duress, he says that he is hunting a dragon. And references actually the ironwork in mm -hmm. the uh, in the forge where he's being yeah. held. Now I think that's quite cool actually mm -hmm. because because you would have metalwork references to yes. to mythical beasts. So actually a local mythical beast I don't know if you've heard about this one is the lantern worm. No, no. Spelled W Y R M. It's an old English oh, word for right. from my worm. Mm -hmm. And it's um, so you have these monsters lying around all over the place. You have Grendel himself from Beowulf. So, so that's clear. Yeah, that's mythology is thick with yeah, yeah, thick with them. Um, ghosts and zombies and and beasts. Snakes and, and snakes. Yeah. So that that's a positive. Um, and uh, and I quite like the fact that he's able to refer to the iron work to to explain himself. Mm -hmm. So that's that's good. Um, Next we see the women preparing a feast in the hall. Less ridiculous costumes. Less revealing costume, that's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yes, actually that's a very good point, that's, that's, a, that's two positives. Because yeah. actually she's now wearing a, what's called, is it a Hannah Rock? Yeah. Uh, the sort of the dress, sort of apron combo. Um, mm, removable sleeves. Bit mm, too early. Yeah, a bit too early for that. But anyway, that's a positive, we're going to give it the benefit of the It's note. not seen now Conan anymore. No, it's not exactly, it's not Conan, precisely, precisely. Uh, oh, next ish, we have this this strange um, conversation conversation between Wolfric and the king, where they're up in this crow's nest on top of the the great hall, which is a oh no, you did there's a crow's nest on top of a church, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So that that's actually the, well, I wouldn't give it a tick, but you know it's not beyond the realm of possibility. And well, it, the hall is the hall is <laughs> the hall is. But again, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Um, so. <laughs> Have this conversation, and it's revealed that Wolfric wants his father has been killed by other people, by other raiders, and he wants to go off and kill someone else called Gunnar. 
But anyway, the king, Hrothgar, uh, is saying, um, no, don't do this, I am king. And they show this by, or rather he signifies that he is king by having a, a, a medallion around his neck. Mm -hmm. The medallion, I would give a tick. Yeah, I suppose it's a tick. The, the thing is that... It, the thing is, is that there's no formal mm, way of signifying kingship no. or, or jarlhood or whatever. There's a um, one of the key elements which we'll come to after, uh, actually in po part two, um, is gift giving. But we'll come mm -hmm. back to that. So, but a signifier is reasonable. But yeah. you didn't like the signifier is a trinity knot. Yeah, trinity knot. Um, Celtic. Yeah, yeah, very Celtic, very well, actually, very, very, very post Christian. Christian Celtic. Yeah, and um, and and ultimately, maybe if they'd gone with a um, with the equivalent, but for uh, was it Odin had yeah. a, had a it was like a three triangle yeah. symbol. I put it up on the screen. That could have worked. Uh, or just maybe like uh, Yggdrasil with the snake around it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That could have worked. Yeah, the world tree with yeah. with. with um, on what the snake's called. Oh god, I should know this. Oh. Anyway. Uh, we will put it up. Yeah, we'll put it up on the screen. Um, so it. so that that's 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 a, a positive and a negative, yeah. I think. There. Um negative. The man our hero escapes, having revealed his name to be Canaan, incidentally. Canaan escapes uh, because he's being held in the forge and he's able to burn through his ropes. Like what? Like who held uh, I mean this isn't really a period complaint, this is just like a common sense complaint. Who uh, who puts a prisoner in a forge? Also the forge. Who leaves hot metal work when you leave the forge with yeah. a prisoner in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a, in a wooden village. It's just silly. Very, very silly. Um, oh, and that's the stone building that you don't like. There are a few stone no. buildings that okay. I don't like. So because stone walls. No, 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 no stone walls yet. No. Okay, so that's, that's another negative. <laughs> Why, these, are, these are ramping up, aren't they? <laughs> um, so a great big horn is blown. It's annoying the size of the horn, but we're not going to negative it because a horn is would be blown. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and this is as, as an incidental, accidental, true, is that um, you, you see this guy go, "Hand me my blade, woman." Now he does it in that kind of 1950s vision of medieval, slightly vaguely we might call sexist. We but but oh, yes, we would. <laughs> but he does it. I think. Um, you could argue that, they, that, that it hints at the, at the role, actually the powerful role of women in the house. Whereby okay. actually, but in, according to some, it was, it was it, things like possessions were actually under the woman's control in the house. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what they're doing. No. no, but his tone, whether it's bad acting or not, yeah. <laughs> suggests that it might. It might. So that's a, we're going to give it a tick. Um, <laughs> now the the beast is there is a beast incidentally. This mm -hmm. man was hunting a dragon. We don't know this until now. He's uh, not mad. Yeah, he's not mad. He's not making it up. The beast is loose and it seems to have hard skin uh, as hard as steel. Its mouth glows um, and uh, there's a scuffle. Uh, the beast gets away, and our man, our Canaan uh, uh, protagonist, is recaptured, tied to a well, and wakes up with a little boy who's eating some bread. Um, that's the detail that I just thought I'd mention. Yeah, yeah. it's a really good detail. Yeah, a really nice little boy. Um, very dirty. Actually, the selective dirtiness in this <laughs> film. Yeah, so the it's, little boy's filthy. Yeah. Everyone else is kind of clean. Decently. Except but their hair is filthy. Greasy it's like and they flat. have never ever seen a bath. Yeah, or a comb. Or, or a comb. Which, I mean... Which, if you're going to do Vikings, Vikings are famous for their combs. Yeah, they're obsessed with cleanliness. So, actually, that's, yeah, that's a negative. Negative. Yeah. Yeah, negative. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Uh, Canaan is taken to the Great Hall. Yep. Uh, and there's a tree inside it. I'll let Liv talk about this. Okay, it's really, really pretty. And if... Well, it is a fantasy movie. So I will allow it because it's a fantasy movie. But as... Does that get a tick then? No. No, okay. No, because they're <laughs> aiming for Viking realism. Yeah. Mm. And no... No huge trees in halls. No, no. And also, actually, the tree still has leaves in it. Yeah, it's alive. It's it's healthy. Yeah, it wouldn't have leaves. No. No, that, that, that took it's me out. It's quasi magical. Yeah. yeah, so that's a negative. Negative. Uh -uh. Um, but they did venerate trees. Yeah, but we yeah, do have the, the world tree we have in, in Saxon England. I see what they're aiming at, but not inside. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> 
the, the negative stands. Uh, so the architecture is broadly accurate, and, and but then again, you've, you've said you said it says here silly, silly stone, um, but we've mentioned that. We're not going to put another negative on. Um, this is where another name comes in that bothers me. We learn that one of the people in the village or in the town is called Boromir. Boromir. Really? Lord of the Rings. Boromir. I mean, who? There is a lot of Norse names you can use. Mm. You don't have to go to Tolkien. <sighs> Two negatives for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, now, this is quite cool. A bit early. Mm. So I, tr I think a positive and a negative possibly is coming, but this is that there's a priest in there, and he's a, he's a stereotypical Irish priest. He's going, you know, if you if you haven't buried him like a like a pagan, Arr! Lucifer, um, my wife's going to kill me if she sees this. Um, <laughs> being Northern Irish, um, but he he's there, and he is actually we did we do have lots of we know that places like Iona. Mm. Etc. Were sending missionaries out across the northern, north, you know, the northern part of Europe. They ended up in, in England. They ended up in Norway eventually. Iceland certainly. Yeah. But it's a bit too early, isn't it's it? It's at least two hundred years. Two hundred years yeah. early. Mm -hmm. If they are going to be quasi converted, it's about three hundred years early. Yeah. Yeah. So a bit a bit early, but a nice detail. So I think true and a good and a negative. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm a bit more negative. Yeah, no, I, I know, I know, I know. It, it's yeah, it, 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 but it's yeah. But also, actually, I like the way that it, that they mentioned that there is this sort of intergenerational thing. Yes. So, like with um, um, Sutton Who, we know that uh, oh, what was it? Raidwald, King Raidwald, his children were pagan, mm. but he was buried like a Christian. I think that's the way around yeah. it was. And we also have a lot of uh, uh, well graves that indicate that you might have. To the hedge two bets. Yeah, yeah. I mean like mm. yeah, I can I can be both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we also have the famous Thor's hammer and cross. Yeah, yeah. If you turn it around it can be either. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So so it that's why I think it deserves a positive. Yeah. It's a good yeah. it's a good hint in a, in an entertainment movie, I like it. Um okay, uh ba -ba 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 -ba. Wolfric argues oh god I hate this. <laughs> Wolfric says <sighs> <laughs> My father was a Viking, not some woodworker nailed to a cross. And I get the sentiment. I have lots of near pagan friends who'll be very happy to go, yeah! But come on, come on. And they wouldn't say, my father was a Viking. No. They'd say, my father was a king. Because, my father was a warrior. Yeah, not my father was a pirate slash adventurer. My um, father is an is at Valhalla. Yeah, yeah, my father is in Valhalla. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not my father was. <laughs> negative. Um, <laughs> Why in the heck did I put tr positive on I that? I don't know. Negative, massive negative. Honestly. <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> so we do like the movie. Yeah, the movie's good. <laughs> um, Goodish. Well, no, at the end you weren't happy with it. No, either. I wasn't. I um, was writing. You're like, what? <laughs> um, anyway, we're getting to the end of part one. Um, Canaan explains to the king that his people, his people, call the monster a Morwin, which I, I think is a really cool I name. I like the name. The name is cool. That's not a positive or a negative. I just like it's the just name. Cool. I think it works. Uh, it reveals that he brought it here on his ship. I like the duality mm -hmm. of the word ship there. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, and he offers to join a hunting party to go out and capture the Morwin. So that's the end of part one. And I like the fact that we're at cliffhanger. Oh, what's going to happen next? And I think I think uh, so far. The film, you know, it's, it could be worse. It could be worse. It could be worse, definitely. Uh, but if you want to see our final score for this film, <laughs> have to see part two. Yeah. In just, well, just a moment for us. <laughs> but who knows when I'll do part two on, on the YouTube channel. <laughs> anyway, guys, as ever, until next time, do take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>